I think the only game that I'm like really really excited, Dimia, RPG tabletop kind of strategy game, and that's kind of like what I'm currently excited for. But we will see what's gonna be in this showcase, you know. I have no information. I know that uh, bigger YouTubers send me on YouTube here no few stuff, but uh, they don't want to share anything. So aside from Resident Evil, because I'm pretty sure others already tried uh, Resident Evil, it might be actually coming next week. I've heard some rumors because Capcom was scheduling the live stream in April. April, but everything that was involved with Resident Evil was gonna happen in April so I think the release is gonna be like actually next week or something or at least at the end of this month so but like other than that I have like no clues what's gonna be in this live stream I don't think I even have any predictions honestly because we didn't have a lot of leaks comparing to the last year because last year on Facebook Connect Quest 2 was actually leaked what two weeks before the actual conference we already knew what's gonna happen and what's gonna come but like literally with games aside from Resident Evil we didn't have any spoilers or whatever I wanna be surprised this time. It's like it's better to be surprised than let down by overhyped something. Like that's just kind of the philosophy of it, you know? It's like remembering how I did the Facebook Connect to live stream, comparing how I do live streams and how I do videos, at least nowadays, how I edit them. They are like so chaotic. I barely manage to follow what I do <laughs> in the video. But the uh, live streams are so different for me because like you're exposed to whatever you're doing now. There's like nothing to hide or whatever. Oh, funny thing, because last live stream, this microphone is so annoying recording because it's falling off constantly so this time I actually taped this to my glasses to just like have it in one position don't disturb my vision here so ghetto things like that that I do will always stay on my channel I'm kind of confused if my chat is broken or actually no one is writing <laughs> After every video that I put out, I do kind of like a mini blog, what's been going on or like what are like my plans for the videos and stuff like that. So like in the description, there's always something happening. <laughs> Some bullshit is always there. With VR, it's kind of like, I don't watch videos like that because I can do it myself. If I can just play something for myself and just like experience it inside the headset, I don't see the point of watching pretty much others. And it's not like other people are not entertaining enough for me, which I mean, maybe some are. <laughs> that also applies when I try out games. I don't really watch anyone telling me their opinions. I just watch the trailer and just create my opinion around my experience that they have. And that's kind of fun because then you don't really create any bias or just like any opinion that could influence you. You just straight up saying what you think and that's pretty much it. That works actually for me. Oculus have been pretty weird with me as well. When Quest 2 released, it was all good and fun. And then the same situation happened with Quest 1. With every update they've been introducing new stuff but then they started to screw up the existing ones my frame rate and just like the quality of videos have been so shit like normally the frame rate would be 35 38 something like that on the videos but it dropped to like 24 which i can't do anything about it i tried with side quests and just like settings but nothing on my part and that's the same situation that happened with quest one with audio issues i think i believe currently i have one of the biggest like libraries on YouTube in terms of Quest content. I know myself around software issues with Quest overall. And Quest 1 had audio issues, but in terms of that, every game had a different latency of audio or stuttering, or there was no audio, or there was a delay after like 10 minutes. That's been a journey. <laughs> Fortunately, Quest 2 solved that. Not completely. I can notice the good VR footage like edited down. A lot of VR YouTubers that don't even pay attention to the actual accurate sound effects to the video that's playing, because because they're not even aware it's not been completely fixed from the previous headset so I think I'm gonna reset the chat because I feel like I'm getting trolled by myself oh yeah I've been trolled by myself people were <laughs> writing but I just okay I've been trolled by YouTube of course you know that's normal that I've been getting trolled by software and that seems like it's not only oculus at this point like at every step something is testing me I feel like if oculus will release quest 3 it's gonna happen eventually I don't think this year or any headset in general maybe quest Pro. I will buy it right away because I don't want to have software issues like now we have with Quest 2 because it's getting ridiculous. What do they have it for us today? What is this VR news? Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Ruth Bram and I've Ooh. been at Oculus since 2014 working as an executive producer on the Oculus Studios team. Mm -hmm. So it's like Oculus Direct now, I guess. Pistol Whip 2089. Warhammer 40k Battle Sister, Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge, and The Climb 2. 
These games have all since long action-packed campaign. Oh, that's awesome. Because campaign in so Pistol Whip was amazing. I'm always down for a new campaign. In the Warhammer 40k battle sister. Oh god. With their last Bastion updates. Wait, but it's already the there. Surprise me with something because I'm so underwhelmed with Warhammer. Warhammer is average, unfortunately. With Link. Utilizing all ah, Link. Okay, so it's not Echo standard on shit. <laughs> that looks crazy. Honestly, I have to play Lone Echo One, and I probably will do a playthrough on it before. Wait for you to play this. Yeah, but when? Next, okay, like <laughs> no dates still. <laughs> I need to do a playthrough of Lone Echo to just, I think, I understand earlier, the storyline, I guess. There's a lot of mechanics I've heard in Resident Evil 4 that would be very interesting how it's gonna work. The most obvious differences oh my god. For example, okay, that, items that and doesn't weapons bad. and okay. physical objects that players can interact with. Where was so the inventory? Up, you'll also be able <laughs> I wonder if it has holsters. Grabbing them off your body instead of going into a menu. Okay, you can so really holsters. A ton of effort. Has gone into Ooh, reload, manual reloading, okay. The armature even added support for teleportation. As Whoa, well as that's weird. So that Teleport while he's moving. Whoa, that's the first thing I see. <laughs> How in the world are we bringing the core systems from the original over to Quest 2? Well, first, it takes passion. <laughs> Money. Only the best results. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll see. And all cutscenes will be presented in their original format. Huh. So, class screen like video? Play. RE4 isn't known for being the scariest in the Resident Evil franchise. Oh, but it is thank God, because I want to play it. <laughs> You're going to want to turn your head to see if there's a threat. Oh my God. <laughs> if I can get scared from the video. <laughs> I really want to play this, but I just have to like gather myself and just... It's going to be a challenge, but... In the moment, I want to carefully track oh, the what the hell? inventory and find yourself face to face with the boss. The experience is totally which different. one? <laughs> I've heard tales. Oh, oh my god. Uh, hmm. Now, I'd like to share with you updates on two of my favorite titles oh. because who doesn't love Star Wars? Every title is your favorite, apparently. Because ILM X Lab is now hard at work on part two, which expands the core adventure and will feature two more legendary tales for fans to enjoy. So, second campaign and two tales? I'm excited to share that one that seems amazing, actually. Way more content that they released with the first part, so Dog I'm down. I don't know why this game is freezing. I honestly. It's pinball, pinball, right? Pinball. Something more? <laughs> the table will shoot lasers or something? Something. There seems to be a lot of Meanwhile, fun things happening outside of pinball. <laughs> oh damn, the, the texture! Jesus. Don't go close. <laughs> Star Wars Pinball VR occasionally offers playable mini games, oh. which were fun the first time around. You know what's funny? The environment is much higher quality than the pinball itself for some reason. That looks like a good Quest home screen. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes the gameplay really doesn't show on the trailer. So I mean, I'm actually for snowboarding game. I love the level in Medal of Honor when I was on the skis. So that might be fun actually. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's... yeah, I'm down. Oh, oh, I'm definitely down for that. <laughs> it's like those old school, you know, snowboarding games or just like anything, but in VR, which if good mechanics, cool, more zombie, yay. But this one actually seems amazing, so I don't complain. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, it's like left for dead, kinda. Oh yeah, definitely good. Yeah, oh yeah. Especially in cop, that's gonna be fun. Coming to VR, meaning on Link, I guess. I don't think it's After standalone. No, I like the mechanics that they did. It actually seems more unique from the other horror games that I've seen. This pack will be released in two parts with twelve levels total. Why two with packs? First, we're introducing rhythm-based climbing where you'll see disappearing grips along your route, requiring you to learn the grip patterns to the beat of a background track to progress through. Okay, that's cool. But who asked it? <laughs> Receiving reports of a large stockpile of supplies. Wait, that's creators of Walking Dead. <laughs> this can't be right. What's happening? A large stockpile of supplies from the reserve. The whole thing is wired to blow. Okay, so this footage is not new, that's for sure, but... Lock it down before the tourist gets there. I just saw the chest that had many supplies well and that's it. Free update, so... And keep playing. <laughs> that's fun, but okay, that's it. It's been half an hour? Oh damn, already? <laughs> that flew by. I was actually hoping for like a co-op in Walking Dead or something. It is a heavy performance game, but still. Chests? Are they gonna be like scattered around the map or something? Like there was a thing that after a while you could uh, discover a channel on the radio to uncover the supplies or something dropping on certain levels. But that was pretty much it. I actually thought there's gonna be like something more. I think the most exciting mechanically and just unveiling the gameplay was Resident Evil. There's a lot of people that are fans of this game. And it was 
was confused how certain mechanics will be presented in this game. Even though I've never seen any footage from it, but I already heard a few things that, you know, there's some lake boss or there's some chainsaw guy. There's like few stuff that people were interested how it's gonna work in VR. It seems like they're like completely reworking the game. So I'm actually happy that they're not doing like a direct port and they're actually working on the game. So I don't really believe reworking texture thing because it looks how it looks, but I would think just to keep atmosphere, I don't mind it actually. So it's fine. We're getting more horror. Yay. <laughs> I've seen Resident Evil 2 and I think 3 reworked and I've seen the intensity of it. I'm glad that Resident Evil 4 seems to be more subdued. There's something about fast-paced horror games in terms of jump scares or just like something jumping at you. For me that's like a different no. But something like slow pace, kind of like thriller, still scary but does not immediately affect you. Like over time the horror genre that I would be fine with. I guess we'll have to see if Resident Evil 4 really want to do a playthrough. Popcorn ready for my channel is uh, a good thing. With some things happening in the VR realm or whatever, I was tempted to do some trash talking videos because essentially that's what I was doing on the first live stream, just trash talking Oculus and just stuff like that. I enjoy if it's harmless or just like not toxic, you know, just giving a point of view that not everything is black and white pretty much, especially if we were talking about Facebook and just stuff like that. Gameplay video on sport mode. Um, so I remember doing a video on the physics playground. I'm not good at sandbox games and I realized that when I was doing works video. When I don't have set the goal, like the developer kind of leads me to, for me it's hard to do something, not like creative, but like should I do something funny? Should I create some situation that is like fake? Or like there's a lot of things going on in my mind because I'm like pointless, what should I do? I will try it out because I've heard that it's a really big upgrade from Physics Playground, so yeah, it's up to the imagination. It's not like I have none. <laughs> I feel like I just have to prepare myself before doing a video or like plan out what I want to do. I I don't see the reason why not so. Finish the storyline of the horizon. It's gonna be hard because the horizon developers really pay attention to what's going on in the game and they actually don't really release something that's buggy. That's kind of like how I've noticed uh, throughout the development period of this game because I've tried this game. I think that was one of the first playthroughs I did on uh, the quest one I believe back in the day so we'll see. The horizon developers are really hard working and they really care about their project and they're releasing fucking updates for free which I'm mad because I would love to pay for it but <laughs> it's still free and the game is just good so it's almost not fair. <laughs> Senna Senna's Aftershocks. I barely knew what happened in the trailer. From the new footage I've seen, I saw some big containers of supplies. I didn't see any new environment. I didn't see any new enemies. No new weapons. Is it some kind of side missions to get more supplies? It's cool because it's gonna be free update, you know? I'm not gonna lie, I expected, I think, something more. I feel like they should just start developing on a new game, honestly. Maybe not Senna and Sinners 2, or maybe. <laughs> I would welcome it. <laughs> but I'm always curious in storyline or just like campaign in general if we're talking about games. That's like usually my main goal when I'm doing playthroughs. Especially storyline because some games on quest struggle bus. Like I feel like most real storyline games I've played was on the quest one release. Mostly recently it, it's been just arcade games to just play a little while and then drop. I still wait for a good adventure with good storyline. Maybe we would actually welcome some uh, reworks of Tomb Raider. Having triangle would be fun. <laughs> I will definitely play Lone Echo 1. It's a meme now that Lone Echo 2 will never release or whatever because it's been a long time in the works. I think it's the same situation that was with Half-Life Alex. I took upon myself to play first Half-Life and I did I think almost half the game. Before Alex I was prepared with some kind of storyline what was going on kind of in the universe and that really helped me out a lot so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be the same situation with Lone Echo 1 and I'm gonna play it before Lone Echo 2 will ever release. <laughs> Take away from today, more gameplay videos to crunch up and see what's up with Resident Evil. I think the mechanics that we've seen in the footage is gonna be actually fine. I think I'm confident that it's gonna be a good release actually. I've been secretly hoping for some more adventure games I guess. Demio is gonna be the most exciting game that I'm looking forward. I'm gonna see the update for Sentence Sinners. I don't care for Climb 2. I don't care for Warhammer but I will do a video anyways. <laughs> After the fall is gonna be fun. Not many things memorable. And that's pretty much it. Second live stream done. <laughs> I love doing videos for my channel. I can do whatever I want. I can say whatever I want for a psychotic person myself. Something that just brings me down. Whenever I'm at work and I get a notification that someone commented on something, I, I get happy for some reason. Like that I have uh, some kind of connection with my people here on my channel. Kinda created some kind of community here. I kinda treat it like my little family on the internet. It's just cool to have. I don't know. Weird to explain it, but I really get attached to things that are like part of my life currently. It's just fun. When I think about my channel, I just pretty much smile and that's 
fun. Livestreams are not my thing, but it's fun nonetheless. <laughs> so, <laughs> see us.